Hi guys, I wanted to do just a short little video for update on the Wi-Fi and also to kind of show some tricks that we use to kind of make RVN just a little bit easier on us when we are traveling. We normally just do weekends or four days when we're doing shows. Dog shows is what we mostly do. In the last video that I made, I did one on the Wi-Fi and I was showing you guys a hotspot that we were using. And I was like, well, we just don't know if we're going to spend the money for a router. Well, we ended up doing that. As you can see, I've got the Mophie over there. The reason is, is our hotspot, the battery, did this. So after this, we were afraid to continue to use the hotspot thinking that the battery might explode and catch our camper on fire. And I don't know anybody who really wants to be in a camper when it catches on fire. So we went ahead and spent the money for the Mopi hotspot. It also has some advantages. So now um, when we, we can take our Jackery, plug it into our Jackery, plug the Mopi into our Jackery, and put it at the front of the fifth wheel and we can have internet while we're going down the road on our AT&T. So if we lose connection with our Verizon, we have an option to connect with AT&T. Another thing we did was upgrade our television. We got a Samsung TV. When we did that, our soundbar would not connect to it because it has, you know, the red and white RCA plug. And the TV doesn't have those plugs for, for sound coming out of the TV. So what we did was we bought a Yamaha. We just put it up on top. That way, you know, whenever we sell the camper, we can, you know, still have, they can have the sound bar that came with the camper and we can keep our other sound bar. But the sound is way better, guys. Much, much better. Another thing we did is we did put the soft starts in the air conditioners. When we run both air conditioners, the air fryer, and our hot plate, which is not out on the shelf, but we have a um, induction burner. Every now and then it would pop because of all of those. Oh, and our heater and for the electric heater, it would pop. And that's my fault because I always just automatically just would turn both the gas and the electric heater on, which is, you know, Try to remember not to do that. But when I have, we have all those things running, it would pop the generator. Don't know how that's going to work out yet because we haven't used the generator since we've done that. But hopefully that'll stop that occasional pop. Okay, here you can see kind of what I've done behind the TV is I have power plugs that I can turn off. There's there's four plugs behind the TV that remain on power when we're on the inverter. And what I have done is I can turn on and off different switches to allow which TVs and there that way there's no drain on the battery, extra drain on the battery to like power this TV when we're in the bedroom watching the TV back there. So it's a lot more conserving on the battery for us that we can control that with. And I have them on this side as well, it does the same thing. This, this is the plug that goes to the back room i can turn that on and off as you can see it's off right now okay another thing we have done is we have run a power cord from the front tv from the front room living room back to here that we have the tv plugged in for what this enables us to do is when we're on the battery when we're running just off the battery i turn everything off in the camper that runs off electric except for those two plugs behind the TV. So we can run our TV and satellite on the battery through our inverter. What I do is I plug the whole camper into the inverter, but I turn everything, you know, microwave, icebox, and all that stuff off uh, to do that. But I ran a cord across from up, up front to back here so that we could have power to the bedroom TV um, off the battery as well as for when we go to bed at night with no generator on. Okay, this cable here plugs into the satellite and we run it across the top here um, and it goes to our visitor. 
and this enabled us to plug in our booster and run our booster without putting any holes in the camper which my husband did not want to do <laughs> so we've used it a couple times uh, but very rarely have we been somewhere that we've needed a booster this here is a power supply that i use to charge our phones and stuff when we're on battery i turn it on and it'll show you what the battery status is and then it also has a lighter type plug we don't use this one very much usually it's this one that plug that charges your cell phones is the one that i use it doesn't give us a lot of power but it's enough to charge your phones so i really like that um, we did it this way so that we weren't again not having to put any holes in the camper so i just bought this little box and then we just ran the wires um, down below underneath the um, cover here and um, didn't have to put any holes at all in the camper okay i wanted to show here real quick this is the booster uh, setup we got and I know several people have probably watched this on YouTube being set up. And what we found is this is a lot harder than those guys make it look like on their YouTube channels. So as I was showing you earlier in the video, we ended up going with the truck antenna omnidirectional uh, because we just couldn't set this up very easily. Like I said, we both have lupus and it was a lot more difficult than what it looks like when they're setting it up on YouTube. And then the other thing I wanted to show you guys was our door lock. Um, I got this on eBay. The directions came in Chinese or whatever. <laughs> but I just looked up the YouTube. Um, where they're showing, or the directions that they're showing for the ones they sell here in America, and it's the exact same process. And we love this. I mean, it just really comes in handy because you can just push that lock button and walk away and come back and unlock it. Uh, it makes it really nice. So um, that's the other thing we've done that I wanted to let you guys know about. Okay, what we've done here is we put a ring doorbell in. Um, I stuck this to the camper with um, double-sided tape. Um, it's, it's the stuff that you can reuse. You can like wash it and it has held this up. I mean this baby is not going anywhere. We did the same thing with this. Um, it stuck on there with that double-sided tape. And these are little solar lights. Now the one on the other side my husband did screw in with the screw That's before we found the double that double sided tape and um, these are really nice because they come on at night when you're coming up the doorway and kind of help you see into the doorway we really like really really like these okay you'll be able to see some of what we've done here but what I do when I plug the camper into the inverter is I use just this uh, extension cord and it's a Oh, probably, I can't remember if it's the 8 or 10 gauge extension cord. It's really thick. Um, but I plug it into the inverter, and then we have power to run our TV and satellite. That's the only thing I really um, run off of it. Then over here, I kind of loosened this to kind of show you. We made a double box for our batteries, and my husband installed this little reader so we can tell kind of where the batteries are and then the, I had him install this for me now this allows us to plug in our macerator and we also have a portable tire inflator that I can also plug into this and that allows us you know if we get low tires or whatever um, I can just plug in an extension cord and then the tire inflator and inflate the tires if we need to that comes in really handy okay this is kind of messy <laughs> but i will try to explain what i've done here because it saves us a lot of time when setting up this 
is for the living room satellite and you can see I leave this plugged in this is for the booster I leave it plugged in um, you can see these here I have different quick connects for the water and the black tank flush so for the fresh water I use these kind of quick connects and that allows me to not get our hoses mixed up the quick connects are not interchangeable so that helps us keep everything straight too okay this thing is wonderful it allows us to hook right up to the tank and it goes down into the freshwater tank and it keeps it makes it much easier but i leave all this stuff connected all the time so i'm not undoing it it's really difficult especially i'm six foot two so when you're trying to bend under and unconnect or disconnect when you're trying to bend under and disconnect these things it's really difficult to do when you're six foot two i don't know if you're shorter might be easier but when you're tall it's difficult so i leave those i connect that black to i've made a connection here on this so i connect those two together and then i just run this to the satellite much much easier to set up the satellite um this white cord i run it through and we run it to the back. Hold on. One of the things I did was also replace the directional antenna that I got with my booster with one of the truck antennas. And it runs down. And you can see it has a little connection here and I connect the booster to that and so I did have to pull that hose cable through that hole run it back here and hook it up life-savingly easy <laughs> okay I'm not gonna show you how this works because you can watch on video um, we've moved our generator to this Kurt um, cargo carrier. It's good for 500 pounds. What we did was my husband welded a receiver under there. So now what we do is when we get to a dog show, we put in a um, one of those generator remover things that cranks up the generator. We swing it around, lower it down, so our generator's on the ground and not vibrating the whole camper. And it gets this big generator out of the back of my pickup, which makes it a lot easier to hook up and disconnect the pickup. It's not in the way. Okay. Okay, we've got... When we go to a campground and we're going to have be there for a little while, we do a full hookup of our sewer system. So the sewer system, to do full, we need both boxes. If we're doing just half, like the where the shower is and the black water, we just need the top box. Um, and the galley would not be hooked up if we're just using the top box. But this kind of helped us clean up this area through here where our toolboxes and stuff are. This is the connection I use when I hook up to electricity to the inverter. So I use this one straight into the inverter. This makes it a lot easier for me to go back and forth from generator to inverter because I just have to remove this end instead of having to unplug all this stuff <laughs> which is harder to unplug uh, in my case anyway this allows me to use the short electric plug um, instead of the long ones if we're close enough to the power station you know i can use this and just the short plug and not have to worry about the other one the others are pretty much all ones we have just in case we might need them. Like if we only have uh, 30 
amp and not 50 amp we have an adapter that would take us to the 30 amp plug and of course you know that this is a surge protector and then we have extra cables and stuff um, like this for the generator and things like that go in here you know things that we might need and of course you always need a toolbox if you own a camper in here you can see we have the rec pro um, this isn't the complete system, but we have the Rec Pro macerator. And again, I have the quick connect on that water hose that goes with the uh, black water tank stuff so that I can easily move that back and forth. But what we are going to do is take this here. We're going to modify this, or one of these, not this particular one, but one of these, so that we can hook this to the drain in there, and then we can just go from hose, macerator down the hose into here to dump into um, the sewer station at Flying J when we dump at Flying J. It's going to make things way easy, a lot easier when dumping. Oh, I do also have back here a solar light, and it's turned off right now, but when we go somewhere when I'm using the generator, I have that where I can turn it on and, you know, put gas or whatever in the generator that I need to. I can see back here. Another thing I do do also is when we get somewhere... If we're kind of off by ourselves and away from the other uh, dog show people, is I will put cameras up here with that sticky tape I was telling you about to watch over the generators. I can point it directly at the generators, but they're movable, so I can put them wherever I need to with that double sided sticky tape. Okay, another thing that we have that has just really been a blessing to us is this little gas. Um, pumper. I put this in the gas tank so I had to remove the caps that prevent you from, I don't know what they're for, but anyway, I had to remove those. And um, you stick this down into the gas tank and then you can just easily pump gas into your uh, generator. And you, I just click this onto the side of the generator and it automatically turns off when it's full so this has been really nice to have so nice in fact that when i have a couple of uh, smaller ones in case this one goes out <laughs> i know it's awful okay, this is the backup. as you can see it is um, basically the same thing it's a little bit different the other one's a little bit easier than um, just kind of set it and walk away. This one's not as easy. You kind of have to watch it more closely because it's not built quite as good. But it's still easier than trying to lift up those gas tanks and pour the gas. Okay, so we'll see if you can see this with this bright sun. Okay, here is our generator uh, lifter. This is what we use to lift the generator. Like I said, there's plenty of videos to see these online. And that just hooks into the back of that cargo carrier. And then my sister and I can lift that generator up, put it down on the ground, and lift it up, put it back down. Also, I have the little giant ladder. I love this. This helps me uh, stably reach the back back here in order to hook up the chains. Now, with this ultimate hitch, they say you don't have to hook up the chains, but I had seen over and over where people didn't have the chains, and depending on the police officer, then they had to fight it, and, you know, who wants to go through all that? So we just went ahead and put the chains on there. This, to me, is so easy to hook up. I mean, I just drive under there, lower it um, down on this ball, and lock it, and hook up the chains, and we're gone. And, I mean, I can pretty much come in from any angle, um, that I need to. I know you're looking at the back of my truck thinking, what has she done? But we bought this truck from um, 
it used to be an oil field truck so we were lucky the one i mean we looked at this one it was really really nice but there is some damage to the rear the bed of the truck as you can see but this truck has been really really good at pulling our camper um but i just have to i open up that little window in the truck and then i can see to drive this ball right underneath their uh, camper i can hook this up by myself nobody has to be out here helping me i can do it all by myself and that's pretty cool i love it Another thing I did was on our slide outs, because we're usually park in parking lots, I put these reflectors on our slide outs along with on our um, patio that comes out the front so that if somebody is driving by our camper, they'll see the reflectors um, shining back at them. Hopefully they won't take our slides out. Uh, working in dog shows and running the, where the campers stay, I've seen plenty of people get their slide outs run over by somebody else coming in late and they didn't see their slides out sticking out and I've also heard of people that are in you know Walmart parking lots or something like that something similar happening so if you mark your slide outs at least they would maybe see them and give you maybe have a chance for them not to get run over and uh, wiped out I don't know give it a try see if it helps okay came back here to show you that I also have them on the back side uh, the reflectors are there so that you know like i said somebody can see that they're there okay we also um added this piece here so that the plug would not be pulling against itself it just makes it a little bit easier to um, not tear up your power cord there and we also added these things which i have never used before so <laughs> there you go and they just pop right back on. They're a lot easier to take off. I mean, we try to do as much as we can to make everything as easy as we can on ourselves. Um, just because um, it's hard for us to get things done that require a lot of physical um, motion. So we try to do as, you know, as much as possible that's easy, makes it easier to do. And that's just, you know, with lupus, you have to do what you have to do to try to make it work for you. Okay, we also added cameras to uh, record our both sides and the rear, um, you know, just to make it a little bit easier to drive in traffic without, um, gives you a better chance of seeing if somebody's coming. And you can see the rear one up there I'd like to show you a few more things that we like to use these hooks are really nice the back comes off and you hang them up on a smooth surface like your cabinets we hang them up and you can see they hold um, different things up for you we've got them up by the door and they hold our keys when we come in the door I've got them set up higher and lower so you can just reach i also have uh, some fly swatters held up by them and they're really strong i mean i'm pulling hard and you can see it's not coming off but you can get them off when you want to you just pull them up by the corners and you can wash the back of it and you can reuse them and we really like these this is the thermometer that we use it's the go v system and we also put these in our icebox and freezer. It will send you an email when you uh, temperature gets out of range from where you want it to be, whether too hot or too cold. You set it the range that you want it at, and it'll send you an email out. I put the little blue tab that came with it to turn it off when we're not traveling so that it saves the battery. And when we get there, I just pull that out and I'm ready to go. And it starts letting me, you know, warning me whenever we're outside of the temperatures that we need to be in. This is very important to us because of our dogs. This is a ring camera. You saw the one I have hanging on the door. In some areas, we want just a little bit more coverage depending on where we're parked at. Most of the time, we're kind of parked around other dog show people, so it's not a big deal. But in some cases, we're kind of by ourselves. 
and two ladies out in the boonies. <laughs> you never know. So I can hang this up on the outside of my camper with this double nano tape. And I keep it in this Ziploc bag. Okay. You find the end and you can see it's sticky on one side and then you pull the plastic off the top and it's sticky on the other side and that way I can hang this camera wherever I want to on the outside of our camera to point at the generator or whatever I want to watch over when we're in areas that I'm not really sure about and you just kind of have to be careful these days. Okay we also use this double-sided nano tape on um, the bottom of our speaker here that keeps it from moving and keeps it stationary. Our other uh, speaker would not connect to our new television. So that just kind of keeps that from flopping around when we're driving down the road. It holds it steady on there. Anything you want to set and stay there, it's good. That nano tape is good for. You can also see I uh, used one of those hooks to hang this calendar. Uh, now the nano tape and these hooks are not good for textured surfaces like this. In the, this case, we used the, like the command picture hangers strips or the command hooks on this textured material. But if you're using it on your cabinets, you can use those hooks. I will. I'll take back a little bit. I did use the nano tape on the back of this clock and so far it's held but I'm not too sure if I would use it on those cases. I also used the nano tape for this thermostat. Now this thermostat was the original one that I had before I started got the one that sends me the um, warnings by email so I just kind of kept this one so now you know I basically have one I can look up really easily and see what I what my temperature is in my ice box while I'm in the camper and the govies will send me warnings when I'm away from the camper. I used the nano tape to hang this picture up. I had used the command strips to hang it up and it had come, it fell down. <laughs> Maybe the nano tape is better for the smooth surfaces and the command strips are better for the textured surfaces. I'm not really sure. You know, just kind of have to play around with the two. You have to be careful about which double-sided tapes you pick up. You can end up with a molding tape and it can pull your surface off. So may, be sure to get the right one that doesn't pull the surface off. Uh, they, it should state in the description which ones are okay to use. One thing to remember uh, when you hang up something on one of these hooks, if it falls down like this, you need to remove it when you're traveling down the road. So what we do when we're traveling is we just unhook this and stick it down in the chair for travel. And then you can see we're getting ready for travel. So everything was taken off here um, for traveling. It's cold here, but <laughs> I continue. This is another thing we really like. It's a Gas One grill. And it works on propane or butane. And you open this up. I don't know if I can... It's a lot easier to clean than the other grills that we've had. And you can see we put foil underneath. This is ready for our next trip. To make it even easier to clean. And it has a drip pan underneath that you pull out. Okay. You can see here it has the cable. This is so that when you're using propane, it feeds through this hole here and you screw in the propane bottle to there. If you have a butane bottle, it goes into there. And this is really nice for two people. It's just my sister and I when we're traveling. I mean, even if my husband goes with us, if we end up going on vacation somewhere, um, 
usually he likes to take his little camper and go fishing when he does trips though but if we do take a trip all together this easily cooks for three people what we what we eat anyway and it's really nice compact and it came with a case the case is not so great <laughs> i'll tell you it's just and the lid kept popping open so i closed it with velcro put it around the handle so I just put, I'll put it in, I'll show you how I put that around the handle just so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, once you get the handles closed, you can see that this is kind of, um, not that, it's not that good of a hold. So I put the Velcro, I put these two handles back and front together. And I wrap the Velcro around there. There you go. <laughs> so now, if these come loose, my lid's not going to come off and my grill's not going to drop in the middle of the cargo hold. This is the air compressor we use for our RV to get the tires up to the pressure PSI that they need to be at. I have 80 PSI tires and this will handle that pressure. So I know you're thinking, no, these won't handle the RV tires, but they do. I just did them yesterday. I actually did four of them. Actually, no. Actually, I did five of them because I had to do the spare tire as well. What I do is I use, we have a shortcut, a little adapter added to our batteries on the camper. So to reach the spare tire, I have to have two extension cords. To reach the four tires on the camper, I just have to use one. But I plug this, this into the tires in the camper, plug this into that, and then I can air up all my tires and get them up to pressure. Now, yeah, it takes a little while. But they do, it does handle that pressure, and you can definitely get it done um, on your camper without having to spend, you know, a huge lot, a huge amount of money on a an expensive air compressor. So anyway, something to think about if you don't, if you're not one of the ones that has a lot of money to buy one of the more expensive ones. This one has worked great for us. It comes with a carry case, so I just put everything in that carry case the air compressor and both extension cords and i put it in my cabinet and it's ready to use whenever we need to if you have the dometic thermometer there are a lot of people that i have read complaints about this and i am one of those people i could not stand our dometic controller when we first got this camper i probably within two weeks <laughs> trying to run the silly thing because they've done this soft touch thing that just, you know, drives me insane. But um, what I do now is, I mean, you just barely have to touch it. But what it was doing wrong for me is when I would turn the temperature up and down, it would automatically go into Celsius and then you could never get it to go back to Fahrenheit. And it just drove me crazy. We invested in the Bluetooth version. After that, we do all our control on the telephone. And it has really saved a lot of hassle. Not only that, you have the benefit that when you're in your bedroom or whatever, you can turn the front air conditioner off or on or down or up, whatever you need to, from the app without, you know, having to come down here to do it. So I really have um, enjoyed this version of the thermometer for the Dometic. So something you might want to think about if you hate yours as much as I hated ours. Can you think of anything else, TJ? What is it? What is it? Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. He's ready to go to town. <laughs>